hello, pray and share warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. Let me like get things situated. Okay. I had to go make me some coffee. I was sleepy again. I don't know what's wrong with me in the afternoons. I'm so sleepy. All right, well, tonight we are going to talk about what God is famous for. And I shared a song by Torrin Wells and Jen Johnson, and I really, really like it. I'm listening to it right now. It is not brand new, but I sure do like this song. It has a great message. All right, I hope you had an awesome, awesome, awesome Friday. It's Friday, isn't it, already? hope you had an awesome Friday. I've been doing laundry today. Probably going to do laundry tomorrow, too. I'm trying to get caught up. I'm trying to get some baskets empty. I have some summer goals, and that's one of them. Is to get all my baskets empty. Go through all, everybody's clothes. What doesn't fit is not taking up space in this house no more. So anyway, that's a couple of my summer goals. If you have some summer goals, then put them in the comments. I would love to read them. Well, I think we're going to have to jump into prayer right now. And then we will uh, get into scripture. Well, I'll read you this first. Try to do, I have an order to everything I do. Okay, well, let's jump into prayer. God, we just praise you and thank you, God, because you are so famous, God, for all the many things that you do in our life. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our shelter in the storm. You are our protector. You are our refuge and our strength, God. You are just everything that we need. You are so much more than that, too, God, because... You are the great Jehovah, and you are the great I Am. You are from everlasting to everlasting God. You created all things that we see and that we don't see, God. And created all people, God, for your plan and your purpose. We thank you, God, that you love us all the same. God, we just pray for... Uh, we just thank you, God, that you are magnificent and powerful and mighty. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. That you are loving and kind and compassionate and faithful, God. You still perform miracles today. God, you're the same God as you were back in the Old Testament. You're the same God that you were in the New Testament. And today, God, you are the same God. God, we just uh, thank you for calling us as your children. We thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We cry out for the lost, God. We just pray. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God. That you would open their hearts. That you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We just pray for them to come home. We pray for them to repent. We pray for them to let you reconcile the relationship between you and them. God, we pray for all the disasters. We pray for Puerto Rico. Um, hundreds of thousands of people are without lights. God, and it's hot there. So we just pray that they would get the electricity fixed for the Puerto Ricans, God. We know that it could happen anywhere at any time, God. So we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. God, we just uh, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for all of our students at camp, God. Every detail in their lives, God. You know all the solutions. You know the outcomes, God. Many of them are experiencing different things, God. We just pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus, either to return or to find him the first time, God. We pray for all the leaders. We pray that 
you would give them guidance and wisdom and we pray for all the people that are putting this camp on God we just pray for blessings for them we pray for guidance and wisdom for them also we pray for the Holy Spirit to move across this campground God just drawing people to Jesus we just pray that they will have the most that they've ever had saved at camp before God we just pray for peace comfort and strength for people that have lost loved ones we just pray that you would uh, be with them that they would feel your presence and in Jesus name we pray amen all right friend Josie's not here yet well, let's see what God is famous for these are some of the stories I'm sure you've heard it's always good to have a reminder of these let me go ahead and read what I wrote this morning though <clears throat> I'm sorry coffee doesn't seem to help with my allergy throat thing but it will keep me awake maybe until 2 who knows I stayed up till 2 maybe not I don't really want to stay up till 2 again okay so this is what I wrote about this song and I hope you get the opportunity to go and listen to it I love this song and message by Torin Wells and Jen Johnson famous for it's called famous for and it's also in parentheses I believe for all the things that God is famous for he is our creator of all creation of all things we see don't see in all people of all races God chooses our races not us God chooses that God chooses gender God chooses family God chooses our race we don't get to choose those things God already has a plan and purpose for every one of us God calls God loves all races all of them God calls all races to love and respect each other. God is sustainer. He is supreme authority over all in who he created. He has sustained this whole world for years and does not need help from human race to help him. He doesn't need any help. He's got this. He's got this sustaining thing down. God is our protector. He protects all in ways that we cannot see or understand. God is our provider. He provides all of our needs. We must seek Him and His kingdom first and let our needs be known through prayer. God is our shelter. He hides us under His wings. God is our strength. He gives us strength daily to endure the storms of life. God is so much more. This is God's message for tonight if you can think of more leave them in the comments and I will add them we are eternally blessed God loves us so much that he sent his only son to set an example of love compassion joy and peace for us Jesus paid the price on the cross for all of our sins he died for all to offer eternal life through salvation is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. Oops, I went too far. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16, 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today come just as you are come just as you are don't try to clean yourself up okay so let's get into some scripture let's see if we can find some scripture that is an example of what God is famous for all right let's look at Exodus 1421 this this story came to mind today I 
Exodus 14, 21. Well, actually not, let's say. Uh, let's start with 20. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. So it's a cloud to the Israelites, but it was darkness to the Egyptians. But it gave light by night to these so that the one so that the one came not near the other all the night. So he kept them separated. He kept the Egyptians and the Israelites separated all night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the watch, the Lord looked unto the host of Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us, free, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand, and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. So that is a story that God is famous for. It's when he split the sea. He split the sea, the Israelites went across on dry ground, and the Egyptians got drowned because I think the Egyptians probably would have lived if they had left Israel alone. But I think God was just tired of them pursuing Israel and trying to keep them in bondage. Okay, so let's move to Daniel. Let's move to Daniel. We're studying Daniel at church. Um, we're doing a good, good study on it. My husband's preaching Sunday, but I'm going to be at camp, so I'm not going to get to see him preach. But I'm going to help him tonight try to get some things together. Okay, Daniel 3, the fiery furnace. How many of you remember the story of the fiery furnace? Okay, I'm going to start, actually I'm going to start with Daniel 3. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura 
in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is command, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso faileth not, who falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of, the, of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image, and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then, king, then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <coughs> then they brought this, these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if you worship not, <coughs> excuse me, oh my, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace, and who is that God? that shall deliver you out of my hands. <laughs> I know the end of the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto these, O king, that we will serve thy gods. We will not, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. 
And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fire of furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hose, their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, spake, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair on their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So that was a good ending to that story. So not only did they survive because Jesus was in the furnace with them, but they got promoted. They got promoted for doing what was right. So you can't beat a deal like that. Okay. <clears throat> so the next story is Daniel in the lion's den, which is excuse me, it is comparable to this one because it is the same thing. Um, but it's a different king. It's not Nebuchadnezzar. It's um, Belshazzar. So I think that we are going to read just the, we're not going to read the whole thing. Uh... Okay, let's start in Daniel 6:13. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition, his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. And then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake, and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed according concerning Daniel. 
Then the king went up to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver you from the lions, deliver thee from the lions? I lost my place. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel, and hath shut the, the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocence innocency was found in me and also before thee O king have I done no hurt then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den so Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God and the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree, it was actually King Darius, I saw Belshazzar in chapter 5, but it was King Darius. And I remembered when I saw King Darius that it was King Darius because there is a VeggieTales version of this. Okay. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed in his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. All right. So another good story about the miraculous power of God in the stories that he is famous for. And so let's move on to Ezekiel. I'm not sure whether I've already passed Ezekiel or not. Oh, Ezekiel is before Daniel. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about some dry bones. How is it possible that God could put an army together of dry bones and put everything on those dry bones that belonged? That is so miraculous. Let's see where it says that. Does it say prophesy to these dry bones? No. Oh, it's not 36. Okay. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to start at the beginning of 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open val valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said to me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. 
and I will lay sin sinews upon you and will bring up the flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone and when I beheld lo the sinews in the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus saith the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said to, unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you. And ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The word of the Lord again came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it, for Judah and, one, and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, for all of the house of Israel his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand, thine hand. Okay, well, I, I just wanted to do the prophesy about the dry bones. That is another story that God is famous for. So let's talk about Jesus. Let's look up some scriptures about Jesus. So let's look in Matthew 14. Matthew 14, starting in 13. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men beside women and children. So, you know, probably most of the men had a wife, so that's nearly double. And you know that they had children, probably a lot of them. So Jesus fed many and then they took up fragments because that was his miraculous way. This was a miracle. All right, let's read 14, 22 through 33. This is another miracle of Jesus. 
and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou, thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. So another miracle of God. And Peter actually walked on water. But when Peter saw his circumstances around him, which a lot of times we do the same thing when we see our circumstances around us, we panic and we take our eyes off of Jesus. If we will keep our eyes on Jesus and we will keep our focus on Jesus, then things will work out a whole lot better. But Peter, he took his eyes off Jesus and saw what his surroundings were. But Jesus saved him. Another miracle, really. Okay, so Luke 17, 11 through 19. <clears throat> Listening to Waymaker. God is our Waymaker, our miracle worker, our promise keeper, and our light in the darkness. And so, so much more, too. All right, Luke 17, 11 through 19. <clears throat> and it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his, at his feet, giving him thanks. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto them, Arise, go thy way. Uh, thy faith hath made thee whole. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things, and be rejected of this generation. And 
as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down and take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, the other shall be left, two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left, two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Okay, this is not the story that I thought I was reading. 11, 9, 10, 11, 9, 10. It was supposed to be Jesus raises Lazarus, but it did talk about the lepers, but I don't see anything about Lazarus in here. All right, I would say that that is not my mistake this time, but that was about the lepers and it was a good point that only one of them came back and thanked God. And then we get all this information about the last days. And I believe that we are living in those right now. And so, okay. Let's read about Jesus being raised from the dead. Hopefully it's right. John 20... I guess I could have written it down wrong. 21 through 18. Okay. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre, and he stooping down, and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeing the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and, see, and seeth two angels in white, sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. 
And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be a gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she returned her she returned herself she turned herself and saith unto him rabboni which is to say master jesus saith unto her touch me not for i am not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren and say unto them i ascend unto my father and your father and to my god and your god so that that is when jesus was raised from the dead. So now let's read Titus 2.13. Gotta find Titus. It's not very long, so there we are, Titus 2.13. So this will be an awesome thing, too, when Jesus comes back to get us. Looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority, and let no man despise thee. Okay, so Jesus is going to come back. He will come back. That is like the only thing that is not fulfilled yet. So these are the things that God is famous for, plus a whole book, a whole book more of so much more, but I couldn't share all of it with you tonight. I did share a lot with you. I might should have done this in two nights, but anyway. All right, let's see what my, my notes said today from... I don't think they were very long today. So, um, he said, Child, be aware of what is going on as you pray. Much takes place this week. This is a busy week. We're to the end of this week, but it's been quite busy. Listen to my messengers and not the show going on in your government. Like, don't listen to the Congress as they bicker back and forth. Many pretend to be on the other side but are not. Keep your focus on my truth tellers. Child, always keep your focus on Jesus. Child, keep mo moving forward and not backwards. Be thankful and grateful for all things, child. Do speak about all the many things that I have done in your life and others too in my word. Child, stay close and encourage others to stay close to Jesus at all times. And I said, thank you, God, for meeting me again today, for encouragement to remind me that prayer is needed. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mom and daddy a hug. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient in all I ask, child. Work for my glory and honor today. Praise me in all things, child. The race continues, child, and the rewards are waiting at the finish line. They are like no other rewards ever on earth. Be obedient and be blessed, child. And I said, Maranatha, God. So I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready. I'm afraid I'm going to spill my coffee. Okay, how do we want to do, I still have my board here that I need to, I need to do something with. How do we want to do our, Not 
be good. This is faith. It's faith and it's like an acrostic thing. Let's check this out tonight. I've never done this one. Okay, it says faith visit. Outline. I'm just going to skip to faith. Spell out on fingers. F is for forgiveness. We cannot have eternal life in heaven without God's forgiveness. In Him, meaning Jesus, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, Ephesians 1, 7. A is for available. Forgiveness is available. It is available for all. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life, John 3:16. But not automatic. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7, 21a. I. I is for impossible. It is impossible for God to allow sin into heaven. God is love. John 3, 16. Just for judgment is without mercy. James 2, 13a. Man is sinful, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, Romans 3.23 So the question is, but how can a sinful person enter heaven where God allows no sin? So T is for turn. If you were driving down the road and someone asked you to turn, what would he or she be asking you to do? Change direction. Turn means repent, turn from something, sin, and self. But unless you repent, you will always you will all likewise perish. Luke thirteen three B. Turn to someone, turn trust Christ only. The Bible tells us that Christ died for all our sins. According to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3b through 4. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. H. H is for heaven. Heaven is eternal life. Here, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. John 10, 10, B. Hereafter, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 3. How? H is for how. How? How can a person have God's forgiveness, heaven, and eternal life, and Jesus as personal Savior and Lord? Explain based on leaflet picture, faith, forsaking all, I trust him. In Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so the invitation, understanding what we have shared, would you like to receive the forgiveness by trusting in Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? So invite, ensure, would you like to receive Jesus as your Savior? If you would tonight, what did I do with that other thing that I had? Let's say this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you are God's one and only Son.
I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried for three days and rose from the dead. I believe you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Clean my heart and help me to glorify you. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. So if you said that prayer and you invited Jesus into your heart, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you want to grow spiritually closer to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, then read God's Word and start in Matthew. Read about Jesus. Read about the Savior that you just accepted, the one that walks on water, the one that fed 5,000 people, the one that raised Lazarus, but we got to hear about the lepers instead. Uh, the one that raised from the dead and the one that is coming back to get us. Read about the power of God and pray. Pray to God every day and praise. Find you some praise music and praise. All right. Well, I think I've done everything that I came to do tonight. I am going to bless you. Keep putting my Bible over here. I keep having to get it. It's usually where I leave it, though, at night, so I can use it the next day. Excuse me for my quiet time. Okay, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. All right. Well, let's pray. And... Uh, you can think of anything else that you believe that God has done in your life, then put it in the comments and I will read it. God, we just come to you and we thank you, God, because you are so much to us, God. And you love us and you want great things for us. You want us to fulfill the plan and purpose that you have for us, God. You want us to draw closer to you every day as your children. You want us to unashamedly share the gospel of Jesus with others so that they don't have to perish, God. We just pray, God, that you would bless us with a good night tonight. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, well, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome Saturday tomorrow Saturday so much love much love and cyber hugs I'll see you again good night <laughs>